Hi computer arts students, this is your teacher, Miss Taylor. I'm here to talk about your basics assignment with Photoshop. Today we are going to start the process of making the poster that's in front of you. And we're going to just start with locating the template for the poster, as well as filling in the background and creating those wonderful rays of light that are coming from the background. The first thing that you want to do is locate the blank template. And you're going to find that in the assigned drive right here, PCH Assign. Go ahead and open that up. Click on my name, Ms. Taylor, Computer Art A, Unit 1 Basics, Autobiography Poster, and Blank Template. There it is. That's the exact size and ratio that you're going to want to use for this particular assignment. Now, before you close out of it, what I'd like to have you do is drag this folder, the autobiography poster folder, to your desktop, just like I've done right over here. That way you don't have to go in and out of the server. Everything is just conveniently located for you on the desktop. So what you would do is just drag it over like this and drop and release. I've already done that, so I won't do that at this time. Okay. So now I'm going to stretch out the corner. Yours probably opened like this. We're going to go ahead and stretch out the corner and zoom in a little bit. So if you look at your packet, number one says color swatches. Color swatches are these two squares on your tools palette. The top one is defaulted at black and the bottom one is defaulted at white. You can flip them by clicking on your arrow or hitting X on your keyboard. If these colors somehow are different colors than the default, perhaps you open it up and they're red and blue, you can always click on the black and white to default them or by hitting D on your keyboard. Number two is your color picker. You can easily get to your color picker just like I showed you a couple seconds ago by clicking either on the foreground square or the background square. Click it once, and there you have it, your color picker. What you're going to do right now is pick the color of the sky. I'm going to pick the turquoise that you see on the front page of your packet. It's kind of a lighter turquoise, and I'm going to click OK. There you'll have your turquoise color. Number three, the eyedropper is located outside of the color picker. So if you wanted to locate a color that um, best suits your need, you could find a color from another photograph or image, click on it, and it would, the color picker would find it for you. Number four, paint bucket. Your paint bucket is located one, two, three, four, five, six buttons down, right underneath your gradient tool. To get to your paint bucket, you just simply right click on your gradient and then click on paint bucket. Now with your foreground color being chosen, all you need to do is take that paint bucket, tap it one time, and your background is completely filled with that color, the same color as your foreground. Number five, polygonal lasso tool. The polygonal lasso tool is the second button down on the left hand side. There are three different lasso tools. You want to make sure that you right click on it and choose polygonal, as polygonal lasso will only make straight lines, which is exactly what we need for those rays. I'm going to bring my polygonal lasso tool down to about two thirds of the way of the document. I'm actually going to click on the light gray area, not on my document. I want to go outside of that area. I'm going to click once, and you'll notice that it'll only allow me to make straight lines. I'm going to bring that polygonal lasso tool, and I'm going to eyeball the center and click once. And there I've made my first line. I'm going to bring it back out, click again, and go up to create my very first ray. And I'm going to repeat that process all the way around the entire document.
Now, if you make a mistake or your rays start to look a little unusual, you can start over by double clicking and then hitting Command D. And that works with any selection tool. So if you don't like your selection, you would simply double click and then hit Command D. Now your rays don't have to look like mine. They don't even have to look like they do on the poster. They can be thinner, they can be thicker. It's really up to you. This is your poster. Okay, so we're almost coming to the end here. And there I have it. And what I'm gonna do with that last Ray is I'm going to bring it all the way back over to home, click, and you see that little O that appears? That tells me that I can click and I'll have my selection. Now, before we go to number six, the gradient tool, we're going to put these rays on their own layer. So over here is your layers palette. Right next to the garbage can, there's a button. If I hover my cursor over that, it'll say create a new layer. That's exactly what we want to do. So we're going to click on that, and you'll see now that you have layer two. I'm going to double click right on those letters and type in rays. I like to keep my layers palette nice and organized, so if I ever need to go back and make changes, I'm not trying to figure out which one I'm on. Okay. Now for my gradient tool. This is number six. If I go back to my paint bucket, right click, there I have my gradient tool. You'll see that your options bar will change according to which tool you're on. And with the gradient, you'll get a little gradient menu. <clears throat> now they have pre-formatted gradients. I've loaded many of them by going to this option here and appending what I see here. But what we're going to do is actually create our own gradient. And we're going to do that by just simply clicking once on this little bar. You'll get a menu down here, and you can start with a pre-formatted one and then change it. So let's say I'll start with this one, and I don't want that red on there. So I can double click on the red, my color picker will appear, and then I get to just choose which color I want. I can click on the yellow, find a color that I like, click on this blue one, maybe lighten that up a little bit. And then I can even add additional colors. If I hold down my Alt key, click on this dropper, I can slide a new one over and I can do as many as I want and I could change all of those. If I change my mind or if there's too many up there, I can just flick them off. And then click OK. Now to get a kind of a ray effect, I'm going to change in my options bar to the radial option gradient. By clicking on that, I'm going to get a really nice circle gradient. I'm going to take my cursor, I'm going to click once, and then I'm going to pull up and release. And there you have your gradient. If you'd like to change the direction, you could start from the top. If you like what you did before, go back in history. Change it back. Experiment and play with the other options up here, but I think you'll find the, the radial one you'll like the best. And then number seven, deselect. You'll want to write down Command D. You'll be using that probably more than any other shortcut there is. Now you'll notice that I didn't do the rays on the layer that I want, so I'm going to go back up here and redo that. So what you'll want to see is your gradient on its own layer right up there. Command D. That's what's so great about your history palette, is you'll be able to record and then just go back in time without having to totally start over again. And now my rays are on their own layer, my background is on its own layer, so I can make changes to any of them at any time. 
that concludes the lesson for background. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you for the lesson in foreground. Bye.